They thought outside the box and were able to bring him in from above. So as we consider this lesson, notice that they are actually three miracles that happen at the same time. And so now we call it the, uh, the miracle of the paralytic man, but other miracle, miraculous things are going to happen as we look at the story today. So first of all, in your outline, number one, the miracle of Christ's perception. The miracle of Christ's perception. This is probably the largest of the passages that we'll read at one time. If you'll open to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Mark chapter 2, 1 through 10, we read. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sons be forgiven thee, or thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is, is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And we'll stop reading right there. Now, as we read the story, we see that Jesus knew what was going on in all the hearts of the people who were there, crowded in and around this house on that particular day. So let's look at the three different things under number one. A. He saw the hearts of the four faithful men. That's all the way back up at the beginning of verse number 5, when Jesus saw whose faith? Their faith. When Jesus saw their faith. You know, it's always amazed me that the paralytic man was not healed on the basis of his own faith. He wasn't healed because of his faith. He was healed because of their faith. The faith of who? The faith of his four friends that took him to Jesus. We don't even know that the man asked his friends to take him to Jesus. I was just thinking about that. He, we don't know, it's not recorded for us, that he said to his friends one day when they might have been visiting him, I've heard of a man named Jesus that I would like you to take me to, if you wouldn't mind. We don't even know if he knew who Jesus was. We do know that the four that brought him to Jesus knew who Jesus was because they had faith in him. And so have you ever considered the thought that maybe it was the four friends who said, hey buddy, you got a problem. And we think we know who can meet your need. Let us take you to Jesus. Have you, I, I thought it would be funny, um, but what if he didn't want to go? What if he didn't want to go? He said, I don't want to go. Don't take me out. I'm comfortable here where I am. I don't like going out in the crowds. It's hard for me to get around. People have to drag me around. People are always staring at me. I don't want to go. What if he went under protest? And I thought about that. How many of us have ever considered taking people to church under protest? <laughs> get on the bus. I don't want to go. Get on the bus anyway. You know, sometimes... That, that, I don't think that would be a, a good thing for us to do. But that attitude of urgency uh, is something that I think it would be good for us to tap into. So, um, and then consider this. The, the faith of the friends was an important element in his healing and salvation. Their faith was important 
for his coming to Christ. Our faith will be an important element in the salvation of others. And so I ask this question. Who are they? Who are those people? Who are those people that your faith is going to be an important element in their coming to Christ? Can you identify them? Do you know who they are? Are you praying for them? Are you even looking for them? That's a challenge that each of us need to make to ourselves this morning. I don't know where they are. I need to find them. The folks that my faith is going to be an important part of their coming to Christ. That should be our big picture perspective. When we go to prioritize our time, that's one of the things that we should put at the top of our list. I've got to find those people. Because I'm here for a reason. I'm supposed to be one of the four friends that brings somebody to Christ. We'll talk about that later. B, he saw the heart of the paralytic. In verse number 5, as we complete that verse, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Notice the first words Jesus speaks to the man are not get up and walk. And he doesn't ask the guy, Hey, what's your problem? You know why? Because he already knows what the problem is. And the problem isn't that the man can't walk. The problem is the man doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so he addresses that issue right off the bat when he says, we're going to clear this up right now so that you can have fellowship with me. Your sins are forgiven you. The greatest thing that could ever be done for any of us, is done by Jesus Christ, and he says to us, your sins are forgiven you. It's all made better. We can now have a relationship with him. The first words he spoke weren't, okay, you can walk now. He didn't say, what's wrong with you? He said, I already know what's wrong with you, and your sins are forgiven you. He addresses the issue, the perception of Christ. What a miracle that was. He addresses the eternal spiritual concern first. Then he deals with the physical. We'll talk about that too at the end of the lesson. Then C, he saw the hearts of the Pharisees. In verses 6 through 9, since it's a larger passage, I'll reread that. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. This is what they were thinking. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. You know, I don't think that we spend as much time considering this possibility as we should. Why? I'm going to tell you why I think what I'm going to tell you before I tell you what I'm going to tell you. 